Hello, before we get into the lesson for 1D, which is about special right triangles, I just wanted to go through this little mini lesson, which should um, make the work that you're going to do in 1D a lot simpler or easier to understand. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is solving some equations that have radicals or square roots in them. So when we're trying to solve an equation such as 2x equals 8, we divide by 2, both sides, right? And why do we divide by 2? So that I can get the x um, to have a coefficient of 1. Okay, that's why we do um, that, so I can get the x actually has a coefficient of 1 then. If I have a fraction of, let's say, 2 thirds x equals some number, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal because the reciprocal will give me 6 over 6, which is 1. That gives me 1x or x. I have to do the same thing to this side then too. Okay, so our goal is always to get with that x value a 1 to see what we get. So how do we simplify? First thing we've got to do is multiply to get a value of 1. So like for 3 fourths, I would multiply by the reciprocal 4 thirds which gives me 12 over 12, which is 1. If I have the number 8, which is also written as 8 over 1, the reciprocal is 1 over 8. That gives me 8 over 8, which is 1. Now, when we have square roots, there's lots of different ways that we could teach this. I'm going to show you what you multiply by, which is the reciprocal of each of these square roots. To get the reciprocal, or... To make this a 1, I have to multiply by the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, the square root of 2 over 2. Whatever this square root is, I'm going to multiply that again and divide by 2 in this case, because this is a 2. When I do that, square root of 2 over square root of 2, or times square root of 2, is square root of 4, which is 2. 2 over 2 gives me 1. Again, we're trying to get this, whatever I have to do to this, to make it a 1. So I'm going to multiply by square root of 3 is going to be square root of 3 over 3. When I multiply, I go over 1 on this one. When I multiply that, square root times itself is that number. Okay, just like we did over here, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. 3 over 3 gives me... 1. Square root of 8, the reciprocal is going to be square root of 8 over 8. Square root of 8 times square root of 8 is 8 over 8 gives me 1. So you can see in each of these cases, I'm getting that value to be a 1 so that we can get that in front of our x term to be a 1. And here's one even to make it kind of crazy, I guess. Square root of 111 times square root of 111 is 111, which gives me 1. Okay, so let's go down here. I have three different scenarios of how this is going to work. Some first one is the easiest, then a little harder, and then a little harder. So the first one, we really don't even need to do all of that that we just reviewed. Because if you can see here, I've got a number times the square root of 2 equals 12 square root of 2. So both of these have a square root of 2 on them. So these coefficients, or these numbers out front, have to be the same. So this one's going to be 12. If they have the same square root, and they just are looking for the number out front, it's going to be that number. Same thing here. I have a square root of 3 and a square root of 3. Those basically cancel each other out. I want to be careful in that term, though. So I have x and 9. The value in front of here and the value in front of this square root of 3 are going to be the same. Using that same rule here, x would be 18. Now, when I have a square root equal to a number, like in this case the 12, this is where I need to do um, to get a value of 1 right here. Okay, So in order to get a value of 1, so I can solve this as 1x equals something. I have to multiply by, just like we did up here. Okay, multiply by square root of 2 over 2. 
I'm going to put it here. It's going to be kind of messy here. Square root of 2 over 2. Do the same thing on both sides. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 over 2 cancels out, and there's my 1x. I'll even put a 1 there to remind us. Then I have to go through and do this multiplying. Now remember, I cannot take this 2 into a square root of 2. You can't simplify there. But I can simplify square root or 12 and 2. Okay, So this is 12 on top, 2 on the bottom. That gives me 6 and square root of 2. So this would be the value of x for this problem. Same thing here. I want to get this to be a 1, so I'm going to multiply by square root of 3 over 3, both sides. I do this so that this right here can become 1. And over here, I've got 9 on top and 3 on the bottom. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Carry the square root, and there is my value of x. Here, multiply by square root of 10 over 10. Okay, why are we doing this? Because I want this to be a 1, so I can have 1x equals. Now this one, 18 and 10, can be reduced. Both of them are divisible by 2. So I've got 9 on top and 5 on the bottom. And just carry the square root of 10. My last row, we're going to follow that same procedure. We're just going to um, have a little bit more multiplication over here. So to get this would be a 1, square root of 2 over 2, both sides. So x equals, now I've got to look at this. I can do stuff with square roots and I can do stuff with numbers. So 2 on top and a 2 on the bottom, those are just plain numbers, no square roots over them. Those will cancel each other out. And I can multiply square root times square root. So this value then would just be square root 10. A square root times a square root is a square root. Okay, hopefully you're finding the pattern here. Square root of 3 over 3 because I want this to be a 1. Now i got to do some manipulating here. So 9 and 3. 9 on the top gives me a 3. And that cancels out that one. And negative, or excuse me, square root of 2 times square root of 3 is square root of 6. Done. Last example, square root of 10 over 10. Square root of 10 over 10. That gives me 1x over here. Again, 18 and 10, I can simplify that. Is 9 on top and 5 on the bottom. And these are both square roots that I can multiply together. Square root of 30 cannot be simplified, so this would be my final answer. So hopefully that will help you as you go through and... Um, Get on to the next lessons.